So coming up on this week's Swarf and Chips, Chloe and myself are here at CNF Precision Engineering, where the 10 minute topic is unmanned running. So if we manage the parts correctly, um, we would pretty much get 100% uptime. We would expect this machine to run 120 hours a week plus. It could literally run 24 hours a day and we'd see no movement really. So Paul, we're going to be talking about the MX520 and the MX330, so the differences between them. So give me some facts about the MX520. Okay, now this MX520 PC4 <laughs> is, um, was an addition to CNF's capacity about two years ago. Now this is a five axis machine with four pallets on it as you'll see. And the beauty of this is the unmanned run. That's really what CNF Precision Engineering are practicing here at their headquarters in Aylesbury. And I think as you see, as you go in the machine, some of the things I look at here is, even though we've got this pallet system, how easy is this machine to access as it is without the pallet system? Because you can buy, buy the 520s as standalone machines as well. But of course, you might not need that because you've got this pallet solution here. So Paul, why did CNF want an unmanned solution? What are the benefits of having an unmanned solution? It, it's really about running through the night. It's, a, it's about having um, components that might not necessarily be the same, and we talk about it a lot on Swarf and Chips, where you can load the machine up and you can press cycle start and you can come in in the morning to four pallets completed. But this machine sits in a very, very small footprint yeah. and can accommodate up to almost 200 kilograms per pallet, so it's some five axis solution as well. Tell me about some of the tooling. So the tooling's gonna last all that long? What happens if it doesn't? Well, this is the thing as well, with the tool magazine on this machine, you've got 90 stations. Wow. So you need more tools. A normal five axis might have 30 or 40 tools, but the more tools you've got, of course, that means you can accommodate various different components to keep the machine running. And that really is um, the key here. So yeah, 90 tools, BT40, on a 20,000 RPM spindle here on this machine. So you've got quite a big spindle, big big running hours as well. And for them to have a pallet system, it's the next upgrade for them. Um, their filtering, filtering system as well, they've got a filter mist. Full filtration on this machine. So things like keeping the working environment free of, 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 of contaminants and mists and also making sure you can extract swarf out of the machine is all part of the process as well, because you've got to make this a, a a wholly owned um, successful solution. It can't just be the machining and loading the pallets. But yeah, so it's a complete cell in a sense. Okay, no problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk over to the 330 machine, which we can see is a completely different machine, but obviously it's the same Matsura base. And obviously, as we can see, we've got more pallets here. And we've got, you can see the huge tool magazine at the top as well. So talk to me about the difference in the pallet machine. Well, the, the main thing about this machine is you've got now 10 stations or 10 pallets. So it can accommodate um, more parts, but obviously, as you see, they're, they're quite a bit smaller. So it lends itself to a slightly different market. But again, once again, they are after the unmanned run. Now, this has been something that Matsura have been really successful at but really putting a lot of attention and focus on in recent years and in the UK market you'll notice that when you're out and about on your travels nowadays Chloe these machines are going up are going in lots and lots they're of they're going companies. everywhere they're going they everywhere so also I want to know what is the timing from one pallet to the other how quick it, is it it's a matter when I asked the guys earlier it's about 20 seconds I had to wow. recite it there but it's 20 seconds so what you're what you're actually seeing there is there's only 20 seconds and, and whatever the tool change time is of downtime. And that's one of the measures I think of Matsura when they look at the efficiency, it's about how long that spindle is, is going for. You've got to keep that spindle turning and these machines enable you to do that. Now what you'll notice here on this machine as well is that there's a variety of kind of fixturing, first op, second op, um, but, and, and the materials here, this is like a, a, a nylon material, but 
What we have seen throughout today's visit here, Chloe, at CNF, is them machining harder materials too. Yeah, definitely. They're not just machining harder materials or even aluminium steel. They're, they're cutting nylon as well. And we were talking to Mark as well about how they were using ITC cutting tools to stop. Nylon is such a difficult material to cut and how they were using the um, tools to actually chip break on the nylon because it's so hard. Um, but also another thing I wanted to ask you about, through spindle coolant, how does that help in the unmanned running? Well, again, it's protection of the tools. Um, it's making sure that uh, it keep, keeps heat out, heat out of the job as well. Um, you know, whether you're doing harder, uh, difficult machining operations, the more coolant flood you can have around there, Dep depend on the material that, that there's a benefit. Um, you, drill, you drilling operations, and, and as well, keeping the temperature out of those tools, improving tool life, which is very, very important. I think that's why they've had such, such success as well with these tools, because they're keeping them safe, they're running coolant through them, they're running them at the correct speeds and fees, which is helping the machine, helping them get these cuts that they actually need. It is, and if you look around this shop here, I mean, we've, we've specifically picked on the MX330 and the 520 because they're, they're pallet machines. But they do have um, a standalone 520 five axis which doesn't have a pallet solution on it, but that was before they embarked on buying a pallet machine. Now, once they bought one, it was, it quite, doesn't stop. It was quite <laughs> evident to them that they needed to go down this road. Um, and this doesn't just apply to what we see here with the five axis. They've also got the man machines, the man machines, the H plus machines. This really is a, a very, very blue machine shop. They moved into this place at the start of the pandemic, which was about a year ago, took a big risk and a big gamble. But you'll see here, these spindles are turning, they're cutting metal and the business is, is doing well. And the thing is, you don't always need to be cutting high volume, do you? It's the, inc it's the, it's the insight into this engineering company that we've seen. Once you invest in a pallet machine, you'll never go back. No, absolutely. And I think if you can keep a spindle going, then, uh, like they have here, you're going to make your business even more competitive and even more profitable. Uh, so we took the keys in uh, October 2019. We spent probably seven months renovating, and then the pandemic hit. Uh, we started the ventilator challenge at that point, and um, so it was all all guns and trying to get everything in here as quick as possible to start making parts of the ventilator challenge. Everybody in this game knows how difficult skills are to come by in this game now. Um, you either bring apprentices in, train them yourself, or you fight with the good people that are out there still. Um, we've gone down the road of automation because it helps us to get more throughput through the factory and just relying heavily on skills of one man, one machine. So we can have one man, four machines, for example, sometimes, but it largely depends on the kind of work you've got coming through the workshop at the time.